Hello, Iowa Republicans. All right, that's the spirit. Is it a great time to be a Republican or what? What an amazing, amazing lineup. I was speaking to Lieutenant Governor Kim Reynolds about this. We have got a great lineup this year. This is our time. Our energy is high. The crowd turnouts have been tremendous as we travel around eastern Iowa. And we're going to do it in November. Mark my words. It's always great to be in a room. It's always great to be in a room of 2,000 people who believe in personal responsibility, who believe in constitutionally limited government, who believe in fiscal sanity, believe in free markets, and believe in the sanctity of life. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a lifelong Iowan. I was born and raised in Dubuque, Iowa. Both of my parents had 10th grade educations. My father quit high school in the 10th grade to fight in World War II. And my mother quit high school in the 10th grade to marry her sailor before he shipped out uh, to the sea. We didn't have a lot. A couple of rooms in our house had very unique floor coverings, dirt floors. And we lived in the city. And we had to feed four boys, growing boys. So my father thought he'd outsmart the government and local officials and he decided to raise chickens in the attic. And there's a story behind that, but I won't get into that right now. We didn't have a lot materially, but my parents instilled in me the Iowa values of education, of hard work, of thrift, and personal responsibility. And I carried those values with me to college, and I carried it with me as a young man in the 80s trying to live his version of the American dream. And as a result, my software company grew from five to 325 employees in five years. We went public on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange, and I was rewarded by being named Iowa Entrepreneur of the Year from 10th grade education parents. It's the American dream. We need to create that opportunity again for our young people. That's the reason I'm running, yes. The last 14 months I've been campaigning. I often get asked, Rod, are your views conservative or are your views moderate? Are they Tea Party views or are they libertarian views? And I always answer the question like this. I'd like to think my views are Iowa common sense. It's common sense. It's common sense, my friends, to balance your budget. We have record revenues, 3.1 trillion, coming into the federal government this year. We do not have a revenue problem in Washington, D.C. We have a spending addiction. And Ronald Reagan, Ronald Reagan was right in 1980 and he's right today when he said, no nation can tax and spend its way to prosperity. We've got to balance this budget. We do it around your kitchen table, we do it in the state of Iowa, and there is no reason we cannot be doing it in Washington, D.C., my friends. I think it's just common sense that the President of the United States should take seriously his oath of office to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. As I traveled Iowa the last 14 months, the question I was asked the most, people would come up to me and say, Rod, how does President Obama get away with fill in the blank? How does he get away with his Justice Department wiretapping AP reporters without a warrant? How does he get away with the NSA spying on American citizens without a warrant? How does he get away with the IRS auditing conservative groups like Tea Party groups? How does he get away with releasing 36,000 illegal immigrants who have committed crimes? How does he get away with postponing parts of Obamacare? How does he get away with deciding what parts of the Defense of Marriage Act he's going to enact? How does he get away with deciding which parts of illegal immigration he's going to deal with? My friends, this November, we need to send a message to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that no one is above the law. I think it's just Iowa common sense that if you want to keep your doctor, you can, period. I think it's just Iowa common sense if you want to keep your insurance policy, you can, 
period. And lastly, I think it's just Iowa common sense that the true heroes of this country, our veterans, deserve better treatment in the VA hospital system than they're receiving today. It's common sense. It's time to get the federal government out of the examination room, out of the doctor's office, and put the patient back in control of their health care. We know what we're heading into this November. We know what Pat Murphy, the Democrats' playbook is. We've seen it before. It's tired, it's old, and it's stale. They're going to talk about how much of a small piece of a shrinking pie we all deserve. I say we're going to talk about growing the pie larger so everyone does better. They're going to talk, yes, they're going to talk about the fair wages. They're going to talk about minimum wages. We're going to talk about getting this economy booming again so everybody's wages are higher and everyone does better in all walks of life. And they're going to talk about equality of outcome. We're going to talk about equality of opportunity, my friends, where you can go as high as you want, as far as you want in the country based on how hard you're willing to work. In an effort to stay on time, I, don't, <laughs> yeah, I had to stop sign a, a long time ago. I just want to leave everyone with this thought. It's from Ronald Reagan, who said, let us not raise a flag of pale pastels. As we go forward in this general election, my fellow Republicans, let us raise a flag of bold colors. This is our time. Our time is now. We can do this. We are going to do this. It's going to be an amazing November. Together we can do this. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless this great country. Thank you very much.